my name is Keith Hunt. I'm the sales manager for Harvest Master, and uh, with me is is Ryan Moses, North American sales manager. And uh, we're going to just talk a little bit about the H2 technology and uh, and how it can help you in in what you're what you're doing in the research side. And so we'll go ahead and get going. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Moses here. So go ahead and get us started in this. So no matter if you're a, a contract researcher or you're working for a university or you're in industry with a seed or chemical company, um, the primary purpose of all this research we do is to identify the highest yielding plots and or varieties and the difference between those varieties. Um, we can do this with replicated plots and with those varieties in there and also check plots to help in that selection. Um, we measure this data quality um, by the coefficient of variation or the CV. And the, obviously the lower the CV, the better, and the fewer replications that are required to make these decisions or selections. So how is the H2 grain gauge um, gonna do this for you or get you this better data? Well, in short, um, we're increasing the data, data accuracy um, on your plots and your varieties, making these better decisions for you. Um, these better decisions bring these varieties to market faster. Um, bringing these varieties to market faster can increase your revenue and save you time and give you more confidence in this data. Um, obviously, the H2 technology, um, it can give your breeders um, and edge over the competition as well. So just, just a little bit about Harvest Master. Uh, Harvest Master started in the grain research business developing waste systems for on-combine measurement over 25 years ago. And from the very beginning, we, we got started because our engineers and salespeople recognized that we needed to continue to find improvements to, that, to the data accuracy that the researchers were getting. and. Uh, you know, many of the traditional waste systems that we we started working with, they, they worked well at the time, but they just didn't provide the overall accuracy that, that people wanted. Sometimes these systems were difficult to troubleshoot. There were a lot of issues with them related to just um, making them get a repeatable measurement and, and data quality just wasn't what it needed to be and made it hard to compare data from year to year. So here's an example of a I guess an early way system. Um, if any of you still run something like this, um, we probably need to talk a little bit more after this webinar, but hopefully it's been a long time since any of you have seen something like this. So just to give you an example of this early system, um, there at the top of both of those pictures, you can see those older S type load cells. And basically this older bucket's just, just swinging around in there. Um, you know, you're gonna be lucky if you're within a couple pounds of accuracy on what's truly going through that system. You can see all the, the mess of cables and air hoses in there that might be um, pulling or adversely affecting the, the load cell sensors, affecting your data on there. So like I said, this is just an example of an, an old kind of archaic type system that, that we have come a long way since then um, with the H2 technology. So with some of the challenges of working with this early bucket systems, our engineering team um, took a look and said, there's, there's gotta be a better way to make a measurement on the combine. And so in 1996, we developed what we call the original grain gauge. And many of you may be familiar with this system. It's, it's been around and it's been used quite uh, extensively all over the world with this three chamber design with the moisture and test weight chamber in the middle. And uh, this worked very well on, on a lot of range, a lot of crops, a wide ranging uh, different crops um, use this batching method where it, you know processed the plot in in small increments and brought the whole thing through the system and measured weight moisture and test weight and one of the things that we introduced in the original grain gauge is what we called slope and motion compensation and this was an, a further way to increase the accuracy of your data um, uh, you know, trying to reduce the, the errors caused by vibrating combines, moving combines, and just anything there that was, could, um, uh, you know, reduce the accuracy of the data that, uh, that you were collecting. So a few years later, we introduced uh, what we call the, the twin plot high capacity um, grain gauge. 
and it was really to to basically help help researchers that were now harvesting you know larger plots strip plots and on a on a twin machine that were harvesting you know two plots at a time um, so you can see kind of on the top of this system um, there's two hoppers and we can cycle both the left and a right plot um, through the one set of load cells and moisture sensors on here reducing any side to side bias and this pretty much revolutionized the split combine um, industry having this uh, twin plot grain gauge on there and as i said you know it was primarily used for large volume grains you know corn soybeans and then some strip plots and if it wasn't on a, a twin or a split machine um, the bottom half of that system was could also be used on um, single plot systems so with the h2 grain gauge um, we kind of took the the best of both the original grain gauge and the high capacity grain gauge and took some of those features and functionality and and brought them into a newer system. Um, uh, you know, kind of among those was uh, continuing to evolve the slope and motion compensation. The original grain gauge, as I mentioned, started with slope and motion to improve the weight and accuracy. And so with the H2, we, we've done an advancement on that slope and motion compensation just to continue to improve the weight accuracy. Um, one of the things we also did is we, going back to the original grain gauge where we had the moisture and test weight all in one chamber, we added that into the H2 grain gauge as well. Um, and we'll talk about some reasons why we, why we did that. Um, and of course, we have mirror software that controls all of this. But uh, with the H2 grain gauge, we've got our, our twin plot system, a single plot um, high capacity, and then also our H2 classic, which goes on some of the smaller combines uh, for the small grains. So here's kind of an example of how we can achieve this high quality data and it's it's kind of a two part system. You have accuracy, which is how close you are to the actual value um, and precision is how repeatable those results are that you're getting. So in the I guess the first target on the left, you can see um, like I'm just going to call them bullet holes here. Um, they are not near the bullseye, nor are they um, very repeatable. They're kind of all over. So this is not accurate and not precise. So this is absolutely what you do not want. Um, next over, you can see these are these are getting more accurate as they're closer to the bullseye to the center, but they're they're not close to each other. They're not repeatable. Um, again, to the right, uh, still not great. Um, they're not accurate. They're not right on the bullseye, but they are starting to get more repeatable or precise. And finally, which is what we want and what we think we've done here with the H2 technology is we're right on the bullseye and we're always on the bullseye. So we're, we're accurate and we're repeatable with those results. So as, as Ryan mentioned, so, you know, striving for better precision and better accuracy um, results in better data. And that's one of the, the things that we've been constantly working towards and just, you know, what we got here on the slide is, is you know, you know, the better your data is, um, the better decision making on your part, you know, meaning maybe fewer varieties needing to be saved. You can pick those varieties and get to them sooner. Um, this can ultimately lead, in, lead to lower research costs, higher revenue, taking things to market. I mean, it allows you to focus better or focus on the, the varieties that are higher yielding and, and proving themselves to be better. And that's what we're trying to do with the H2 is continuing to improve technology to uh, get you to that better selection. So this little chart here is just kind of an example. Um, and these are, like I say, just examples. Uh, just threw some numbers on here to kind of show what can happen if you're, if you see the center column here, if your weight accuracy, you know, if it's not accurate and precise and it starts to, to fluctuate all over the place, you can see what happens to the to the yield variation. You know, on, on the top example here, you can see that if we're within five hundredths of a pound of the, of the weight accuracy or the, the plot weight measurement that's coming through there, um, you can see that we're real, real close to the actual yield and there's not much variation on there. But if you go down to the bottom where if you're a half a pound off on that measurement, you can see that it's almost nine bushel of the acre variation that you get in the yield which is almost you know five percent um, off on that so keep that five percent number 
uh, in your head here for another couple minutes on these slides we're showing you. This slide here does a similar thing. It's showing you what happens to your yield if uh, if the moisture accuracy is is off. Uh, again, with the standard amount of grain and the standard moisture, you can see that if you're you know if you're within a half percent, your yield error is only about two and a half bushel, pounds per bushel. But yet, you know when you get up to even one percent um, error in your moisture, you're over five percent or five pounds per bushel off, and that just keeps getting worse. So it is important that both weight and moisture accuracies are as, as good as you can possibly get in order to, to make the right selections and have the best data. So what we're trying to show here is the this better accuracy, it can truly save you money um, by decreasing the, the number of plots or replications you have to do. So. Uh, remember that 5% I talked about earlier, if you had a, you know, 100 hybrids and you were having to do multiple replications of those and you could, you could reduce that by 5% and here's just an example of, you know, maybe it's as a cost per plot um, and, you know, total on the research, your budget that year may be, you know, your expenses may be three quarters of a million dollars, but like I say, if we can reduce that number of replications by 5%, you know, it can save you almost $40,000 that year. So some of the keys that we have put into the H2 that to, to get a better accurate data, um, again, it starts with the DSP module, which is where the um, slope and motion resides, and it's where the processing of the raw data occurs. And so, again, uh, you know, considerable advancements in the technology we're using and how we're using that to get you better, um, better weight data and better test weight data, you know, reducing the errors caused by combine vibrations, movement, starting and stopping, and also even um, varying terrain conditions, um, all of that um, can reduce your accuracy. Um, and of course, with moisture and test weight, it starts with being able to get a consistent measurement. And uh, by, by putting the moisture and test weight in the same chamber and taking the moisture on the same volume of grain, we're able to um, you know, reduce the grain, compact, grain compaction issues and in, increase the, the accuracy that way. Um, also, we're controlling the flow of the grain by having a separate test chamber and opening and closing a top and bottom gate to allow the grain to flow into that test chamber. We're able to control the grain flow, um, and that basically uh, allows um, for better moisture and better test weight reading on that. And then uh, one of the things we, we realized early on is, is cables can have a huge effect on the accuracy of the data, and so we've done a lot of research and a lot of details into how to route the cables so that they they don't have an effect on the measurement and how to how to um, you know basically just improve that so that the overall design of the system does not uh, reduce your accuracy so going along with what Keith said there um, here's kind of a diagram of the inside of an h2 system where all the where all the data is captured here and you can kind of see if you remember back earlier um, on the the twin high capacity grain gauge and on that earlier classic grain gauge um, the high capacity was you know one large bucket and then the classic grain gauge was um, three separate chambers so what we did here on the h2 is we kind of combined that or made a, a hybrid type system which kind of took the best of the both worlds and put it in one package here um, resulting in that that higher accuracy of weight, moisture, and test weight. Um, and you can see here at the bottom um, of this diagram, you know, the cables and airlines, they're all nice and neat. Um, the moisture and test weight sensors are down here in the bottom. Um, we're controlling the flow of, of grain in there. Um, so that's pretty much how we, how we did that. And, and the H2 came to fruition was kind of a hybrid system here. And I think Keith's got a video coming up that shows how this system actually cycles. Yeah, so this shows you a picture of the of the chamber here. And so there's a top gate and a bottom gate. And basically what we do is we keep that top gate closed and open the top gate, allow the grain to flow in, and then we drop the whole test weight mechanism down so we can make a me separate um, test weight measurement away from the bucket. And then we open up all the gates to, to let the grain flow out. So you can see here in this video, um, Top gate opens, drops down, takes a measurement, 
dumps the grain out. So you can see it's 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 all pretty smooth. Um, it all is works pretty fast. And uh, I'll just cycle this one more time just so you get an idea. But um, again, uh, a lot went into researching and figuring out how best to control the grain flow so that we don't uh, um, we don't uh, reduce your accuracy. So, in addition to the change in the H2 architecture, um, some of the things we were able to do here was we we were able to kind of improve or redesign the, the slope and motion um, compensation um, of the system to increase the accuracy and precision of both plot weight and test weight. Um, the, the bucket design also changed a little bit. Um, some rigidity was added. There's more stability and it re just overall reduces the effect of the combine vibration coming through the system and, uh, and affecting the data. Um, also, as we've mentioned before, the, the test weight moisture chamber, we kind of control the flow of grain, um, resulting in a better presentation to the moisture sensor and also um, compaction that, that could have happened previously. We've taken that out. So, um, and as I said, the, the moisture measurement, a consistent volume of grain helps out with that um, from this test weight and moisture chamber where we're controlling all that. So a little bit about the H2 performance. Uh, you know, our engineering group continues to um, make improvements as best we can to, to get better data. Um, you know, plot weight accuracy right now is in the neighborhood of point one pounds, uh, test weight accuracy about 0.8 pounds per bushel. Um, we do have a new moisture calibration algorithm for 2021. Um, we saw some areas where we could make some improvements in moisture and uh, and we will be making that available for people in 2021. And then um, also um, looking at uh, ways to make the system cycle faster um, so that you can get through more plots in a day. Um, so what we're showing here is this is basically um, plots run through the H2 grain gauge and then captured as a whole complete sample. And then we compare that that weight data to basically a precision lab scale. We take it in there. So you can see that um, all these different samples, you know, they're easily within, um, I think this is in pounds, a quarter of a pound here. And, and lots of them are, are closer than that even. So this is just a real simple chart to show, show the accuracy and precision of the H2. So this, this chart shows you basically how the slope and motion of the H2 can, can um, improve the weight readings. And so the, the blue line represents the compensated weight readings of an empty bucket, um, and the orange represents the uncompensated weight. And in this example, you know, we um, basically had this mounted on a combine and and you can see the compensated and uncompensated are matching right really closely. And as we started the combine up and as we started the thresher, you can see that there start to be a little bit of variation. Then as we started moving combine, driving, starting and stopping all while cycling it as, as we're doing plots, you can see that in some cases the, the air can be quite large um, uh, the un uncompensated, but yet the compensated weight um, continues to stay right within just a, a, a few hundredths of a, of a pound in into the uh, empty bucket. So, in addition to the to the vibration, we're also taking out any any slope that might be that you may be harvesting on, or ex the the way system may be experiencing in the field. So you can see here we we started out with basically just a 15 pound weight in the in the H2 and started driving on flat and you can see the compensated versus uncompensated weight. And then as we start to get onto our 10 degree slope, you can see what happens um, on the red line and the data points there with the uncompensated weight that we measure. And then we take that out with that slope and motion compensation. You can see it does a nice job of really filtering out all that bad data. So as I mentioned, uh, there are some improvements to the moisture measurement for 2021, and this is um, some, some tests and studies we did last uh, last year. And so the blue line represents uh, moisture from wheat samples um, from a Perton standard, and then um, 
the orange represents the the uh, H2 grain gauge moisture data. And so you can see that uh, you know greatly improved and 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 tracks the pertinent very well. Um, this to, to access this new calibration, it does require an updated version of Miris, which we we will make available, and then also some changes in the way you do your moisture calibration process. But we're we're kind of excited about having this available for this upcoming season and and uh, how what improvements it's going to make in your in your moisture data. So to get the most out of your H2, um, a couple things you can do here, um, you know, schedule a service visit um, before harvest season. We can come out and do a personal training session with you on the software and, and help with any calibrations on the system. Um, we can show you how to utilize the, the low yield inserts that um, go in the moisture and test weight chamber to really shrink down that, that volume area. So um, on smaller, wheat and soybean plots or any really any small grain plots to where you're getting less than less than five or six pounds of grain um, we can still get an accurate uh, weight moisture and test weight on that on that plot or that sample um, we can also um, go through all the mirrors plugins and add-ons that are available in the software um, we've done multiple you know custom plugins for for different end users and customers to to really get the most out of what they need out of the data to get that going through the H2 and into the Miris. Um, we can also automate and control the system with GPS. So that's something um, Keith is going to talk about here. Yeah, one of the one of the things we focused on on the software side is is adding GPS technology to to the Miris software and to the H2 grain gauge. And what uh, what this will help you do is you can do some field layout. Uh, here's an example of layout we did and then brought it into Google Earth to kind of help you look and see how things are positioned and uh, making sure this is where you want to put your field. Um, adding GPS, um, uh, you know, basically will store GPS position with every plot that you have and then um, as you navigate to different plots, you you will see that where where your combine is or where you're walking or whatever implement you have, you will see exactly where you are and know that you're on the on the right plot, either whether it's harvesting, planting, spraying, whatever you're doing. And then uh, we can also do some automated grain gauge cycle. We can cycle in plot mode automatically with GPS or here on the left, there's a little bit of an example of, of a, uh, something we're looking at now and, and have had requests to add, which is to um, in a long strip plot is to be able to cycle the system at a, at a set distance throughout that plot and we're able to do that using the gps and so you drive through the plot when it gets to that point it will cycle the system um, and, and continue to automatically cycle through the whole whole strip and so at the at the end of the strip you end up with a nice um, uh, yield yield data all across the uh, across the plot so you can see yield variations on a set distance and so again this is something new we've added into into the system Okay, so I guess in summary and going through this slide again for you guys, you know, really what the what the H2 is doing and what we're trying to get across is the, the increase in the accuracy and precision of the data that, that we're getting for you. Um, really, it's in the big scheme of things, it's just saving you time and money. You know, it's gonna help you make these decisions faster and help you make better decisions, whether that's, you know, dollars in your pocket or or you know giving you an advantage over the competition so really that's what we wanted to to get across and again if you've got more questions um, about some of this stuff we can talk through that now or or you know you can shoot us an email later too okay as ryan said this is this is the end of the presentation i appreciate everybody um logging on and taking time to to go over this and uh hopefully you learned something um, we do have a, um, a lot, um, some questions here that we'll take and look at. Um, um, first question uh, we had was um, asking about how easy it is to upgrade the H2 to, uh, to existing combines. And uh, it's fairly simple. We do have some procedures to, you know, add this to, you know, winter stereo combine, Zern combine, or any, you know, any type of combine. We also have some uh, mounting hardware that we put together to help uh, 
um, help with that mounting so that so that doesn't require a lot of modifications. It can be done fairly easy to get you know an existing weighing system off and then putting an H2 on there. Um, uh, let's see another question here. Um, did you see a lot of differences between the 800 and the H2 twin? Um, a couple areas there we did. Um, the open bucket design of the 800 um, did create some moisture bias left side to right side because the moisture sensor was down inside the inside the bottom of the bucket and so the design of the h2 where we where we have the the gates that separate the moisture chamber from the plot bucket that has improved that uh, and so you don't don't have that left to right bias on your moisture um, and again some some improvements in the way the slope of motion is measured on an h2 is an improvement over the 800 so there is some accuracy increases there. Um, um, are there any plans to introduce any kind of imaging to the grain gauge like NAR or anything else? And uh, we are looking at some technology to, um, you know, potentially um, add imaging. Um, we have added uh, NIR sensors below the grain gauge. Uh, we do have a, a plug-in that will interface to the Polytech plug-in. And then we can control the the grain flow past that Polytech, and so we have some users out there using the Polytech, and uh, um, we we do have some people that have looked at the Zeiss, and uh, that's something we're looking at as well. And of course, any other imaging and technology, we're happy to discuss it and take a closer look at it. Um, and so. Um, Let's see, another question here is, what is the minimum sample weight for weed with one insert in the H2? Um, I might have to get back with you on that. I don't know exactly the numbers. The the test weight chamber, you need right around about five pounds of, say, wheat or corn um, to fill the chamber. And, and so with one insert, you know, you're going to cut that down probably to about somewhere around three to four. I can get an exact number and, and get back with you on that. Um, um, let's see, will that add longer plot times? So I, I'm, I guess you're referring to the adding the NIR imaging. Um, it it kind of depends um, um, on how the NIR is mounted and where it's mounted. Um, we do need to account for taking the grain um, and, the, and the NIR measurements. So in some cases it, it could add to your plot times, but you do, I think, save in the long run because you um, um, are um, taking that moisture data, but also getting, you know, additional constituent data right out in the field and not having to bag all those samples and taking them back. So, um, but again, we can we can get you some numbers on that. Um, maybe one more question here. Yeah, they asked about, are there any improvements to the moisture? And as I mentioned, we do have a, a, a you know, different moisture algorithm and different uh, methodology for measuring the moisture and then we will make that available to those who want it for this upcoming season. And then also, uh, again, you know, we're happy to talk about any other technologies, any other add-ons or customizations that you want to add to the uh, to the H2. We've got a lot of plugins that we have available and uh, with Miris, and so that can help um, customize and, and uh, um, make things more efficient on when you're harvesting. So. Um, Looks like that's all the questions. We'll, we'll again probably follow up with those who submitted the questions as well, just to make sure we got things answered. And if you have any other questions, uh, Ryan and I's uh, email information is on screen. You can shoot us an email with any other questions, or if you want to uh, sit down and talk about anything specifically, we're happy to to spend time doing with that. So thanks for attending. Anything, any last words, Ryan? Um, no, I just say again, thanks for attending. And like Keith said, um, if you've got any questions, um, give us a call or shoot us an email. We'd be happy to go through this and uh, help out with that. Okay, thanks everybody.